morning folks I'm Dave Canterbury with Self Reliance Outfitters in the Pathfinder School. What we're going to discuss in today's Materia Medica series is the dogwood tree. And realize that my concentrated study in the field of herbalism is really on trees and the energetics of trees and how they can be used as medicinal preps. And the reason for that again goes back to that four season resource. The difficulty with trees compared to plants is that generally speaking you're going to have to use decoctions to extract those healing properties. Whereas with plants, you can generally use an infusion unless you're using the roots of that plant. This is the leaf of the dogwood, all right? And they are opposite each other on the branch. Now, let's also look at the bark because the bark is a very distinguishing feature of this tree as well. Now, one of the things that I try to find when I'm looking at trees is I try to find trees that have similar energetics to important plants that I would normally use. That way I have that four season resource. And the dogwood is a very good tree with the energetic similar to bone set. It's a heavy diaphoretic, probably a third degree diaphoretic, which means it's going to raise your body's core temperature and help you fight off internal infections like the flu. Okay, so here's the bark of the dogwood tree. And they don't grow very straight. They tend to hook around and grow crooked. They tend to get a lot of that uh, twisting in them where a vine grows around them and make them look like something you want to cut down for a walking stick. And there's a really good example of that actually right up here. Let's see if I can zoom out to where you can see it here. Right there, I think you can see that where a vine has twisted around this, a strangler vine has twisted around this and it's grown around that strangler vine. Now the strangler vine has died off. But that's the kind of stuff that a lot of guys cut off from making walking sticks and things like that. And this is another pair of dogwoods right here. Okay, for my purposes, I want a branch on this tree. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up in here to an area where I've got a good branch that's free of any defects from insect infestation or anything like that. And I'm going to cut a piece of it off above what I want, just like this. And then I'm going to cut off the section that I'm going to use. Just like that. Now this tree is going to live just fine. It's none the worse for wear. It's just missing a branch. All right, so once we've cut the piece that we're going to use, we want to use the inner bark of this tree. And we don't want to put this inner bark into hot water. We want to put it in cold water and bring that to a boil. So first of all, let's process this down a little bit. And really, we can just take our knife and scrape off the outer bark, just like this. And stay shallow with your cuts. I got some inner bark right there. I cut too deep. I'm trying to leave that layer of inner bark because that's what I want for my medicine. Now I'm going to come back in here and take the spine of my knife and start to scrape that inner bark off. Just like this. And as I shred that down, now I'm getting what I want for my medicine. Good 90 degree spine on your knife makes a huge difference with some of this stuff. As far as your ability to process material down, To make medicines. Okay. Remember what we talked about yesterday when we're making medicine, we use Kupilka stuff for measurements a lot of times. And with a decoction, you're not going to be able to utilize a lot of this very quickly. But you're going to have to use it very quickly, what you do make. And what I mean by that is you don't need to make a big batch because it's not going to last very long. A decoction is going to last, if you keep it cool, about 72 hours. 
and then it's not going to be any good anymore. The medicine is not going to be as potent as it was. So what you want to do is make small batches and consume them. And remember that decoctions are much stronger medicine, so it doesn't take as much. You're not going to drink teacups of this stuff. What you're going to be doing is taking spoonfuls and then washing that down with water, especially when it comes to a medicine like this dogwood that is very, very accurate in your mouth, and you're definitely going to want to chase it with something sweet before it's over with. All right. So we've got our pile of shavings here of bark. We've increased the surface area now so that we can make medicine. Now we're going to put this in a pot. We're going to cover it with water. We're only going to use enough water really to float this mark inside the pot and boil it down. We're not going to use a half a bush pot of water like we did yesterday. We're going to go with about a quarter of a bush pot of water and about a half of a Kupoka cup of material or mark. Okay, so once we've added our cold water, we're just going to mix it in there real good. Make sure everything's nice and saturated. Separate our shavings out a little bit in the water. And we're ready to heat this dude up. All right, I'm going to say we already got a rolling boil going inside there. Oh yeah, for sure. So now, we want to keep that steam trapped in there as best we can. Let that thing boil for about 10, 15 minutes. We don't have to boil it for a long time because we didn't make a lot of it. And that's the important thing there. We want to evaporate some of that water to get a good, thick, heavy decoction. But we didn't use very much water and we didn't use a whole lot of mark. So we don't need to boil it as long. 10 minutes, plenty of time for this. Okay, so as we discussed with this, this is a medicine that we're going to use fairly rapidly. And what we've got in the bottom of this pot now is probably three to four ounces of liquid, probably four ounces. And if I take a Kupoka cup, which, or a Kupoka gill cup, I can better measure that out and tell you exactly how much it is because a gill is about four U.S. ounces. So this gill is going to hold four ounces. And I could strain this off, but because most of that bark's fairly loose in there, I can see it. I've got a little over four ounces in there. i probably got more like six. Now, again, this is not medicine I'm going to take by the cupful. This is medicine you're going to take by the spoonful. And you're going to use it pretty fast, but you're only going to use it when you absolutely need it. So if I've got a fever that I'm trying to break, my body's showing signs of infection, I've got the flu, something like that, and I'm running a fever, and I'm trying to break that fever, that's when I'm gonna to go to something this drastic. This would be like a third or fourth degree diaphoretic. So it's gonna raise my body core temperature. Probably a spoon, the size of a Kupilka spoon, would be a good measurement for me, and I would probably take two of these at a time. All right, one thing we can do if we're trying to store this medicine short term is inside this Woodsman's Apothecary is an empty dropper bottle, and it'll hold about four ounces of liquid. So I could transfer that four ounces into here, and I could also take it by the dropper full. And I could just measure that out to see how many drops fill the spoon if I'm going to use a two spoon full measurement system, and then I could take it by the drop. But I could store it for the short term in this. But if I'm using it right around camp in an emergency, and that's what we're really talking about in this video series is, you know, I'm going to use it pretty fast. So chances are I'm probably just going to leave it in the bush pot or something like that and take it by whatever spoon I've got. So this stuff is very, very accurate. And I mean nasty, nasty. So I'll take two spoonfuls, which would be a normal dose, and that's it. Wait to see how it's going to react with my body before I worry about taking any more. But that's the way I'm going to make a decoction on the fly. And that's the key to this video series is what can I do very quickly on the fly. And a decoction like that took 15 minutes to make. And I'm putting medicine in my body that might help me to overcome something in the short-term emergency scenario where I get sick and I don't have help and I don't have medication. Okay, so I've kind of spread this mark out here on this table so you can see what it looks like after it's been cooked. What I will tell you is there's definitely something to be said for 
straining this off into a separate holding container, whatever that may be, your canteen cup, your cup, whatever it is, collecting this menstruum up into some type of a bandana or a cotton cloth and actually squeezing everything out of it into that container because there's a lot of juices and chemicals left in this mark and wringing it out and squeezing it out really good is definitely something that you want to do. Now, if you'd taken this mark and put it into some type of tea bag, wrapped it in a bandana, it would have worked just fine. But being able to increase the surface area by spreading this mark out in the pot, especially with barks and roots, is a very, very good idea if it's not ground and dried. If it's ground and dried, you can put it into a tea bag. But if it's fresh mark that you've made from barks and roots and things like that, you really don't want to trap it in something to decoct it. You want to leave it loose, give it lots of surface area, then collect it up, and in the end, wring it out into whatever your holding container is going to be that you're going to use for consuming that herbal into your body. All right, folks, well, I'm Dave Canterbury with Self-Reliance Outfitters in the Pathfinder School, and I appreciate you joining me out here today for this video on making a decoction from flowering dogwood. I appreciate your views. I appreciate your support. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, and for our business, for all of our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Thanks, guys.